very often when we talk about games pushing boundaries, we talk about it as if it were something that only began happening in the last few years. But this is not a new phenomenon. We often talk about games pushing boundaries only in the context of video games, but this has been done long before we had screens to work with. Games doing more, games as an expressive medium, games as art go back as far as games themselves. This is something that's starting to be acknowledged when discussing truly ancient games, but we somehow often leave out our more recent history when asking the question, what more can games do? James was talking about this to a friend of his when that friend stopped him and said, let me send you something I worked on 25 years ago. Sometime later, this book arrived at James's doorstep, and with it came this note. James, I won't say enjoy, it's not that sort of book. It came from a place of frustration over all the adult material we were doing while shying away from the real hard questions. And since Wraith was already out in the boonies of public awareness, they let me take my shot. So, nearly 20 years old, a labor of love, here it is. This work moved James enough to put together this episode. So, Richard Danksy, this episode goes out to you, for having the courage to do this at a time when the very thought of touching such topics in a game might have cost you your career. The book is Charnel Houses of Europe, the Shoah. It's a devastating book about the Holocaust. It uses the Wraith universe to let people tell stories and explore the horror of that time. It's a book that understands what taking on a role means, and that sometimes there's more that we can do by standing in someone else's shoes than just feel heroic or empowered. It is amazing that this book got made. Even today, many game publishers are terrified of touching the subject. Think of how many times you've played World War II. How many times have you stormed the beaches of Normandy or defended Stalingrad? How many times have you perhaps even played as a Nazi without even giving it a second thought? Now think about how many times you've entered a concentration camp in those games. Think about how often genocide and slaughter was even mentioned. For all the times we fought and refought this war in our virtual landscape, we've almost never approached what is perhaps its most important lesson. And yet here in 1997, Richard and his crew got this pushed through. They were working on a sub-label at White Wolf, a label called Black Dog, created to make more adult games. Of course, many people there took this as a license to wallow in sex and violence and follow the same juvenile path that we usually do when we talk about creating adult work. But their small team took this as an opportunity to do more with games, to show the unique power that role-playing has to make us empathize and to help us understand situations that lie well outside of anything we may experience. And they did so determined to do it right. They knew they were going to hear a lot of angry voices saying, you can't talk about these things in a game. But they also knew that that wasn't true, in the same way that you'd never say that such important topics shouldn't use the medium of television, or people shouldn't make movies that discuss such serious things. You can't say that something isn't appropriate for a medium. That type of generalization doesn't even make sense. It's not in the medium, but rather how we use it to determine whether we're treating a subject with respect. With that in mind, they made a book that unflinchingly looks at the horrors of the time, that is a treasure trove of information without being dull, that is engaging without lessening the blow, or trying to shield us from the magnitude of humanity's crime. It goes into detail without being fetishistic, and explores our modern awareness of these events without being accusatory. But perhaps to me, one of the most brilliant parts of this book is that it uses the game world to help support the discussion they're trying to create. In Wraith, the game, Wraiths benefit from being remembered, from having people in our world hold on to their memories or preserve aspects of their lives. And so here it is used, time and again, without being ham-handed or beating you with a point, to talk about what we are doing in the real world to remember these events, or how they're getting buried over. But it's perhaps best said by just reading you a few excerpts from the introduction. An introduction written by a novelist who writes about the Holocaust, not some game producer or manufacturer. The novelist was skeptical at first, but here, let me use her own words. She explains why this work is important better than I ever could. For those of you who do read Charnel Houses of Europe, forgive me for chopping up and pasting together this intro. The whole thing is worth the read, and if I could read it all here, I would, but here we go. On the day that Richard Danksy called me to ask me to write this essay, I started to argue, but a voice inside my head stopped me. We must teach them through the tools with which they're comfortable, it said. Once upon a time, I thought, there were bards and storytellers who passed on the words of the elders around campfires. Then came the era when the pen was mightier than the sword. But there are few bards now, and as we approach the millennium, the pen diminishes in power. It is not the N-word or the J-word or what's politically correct and what's not that matters. It's learning that we are setting each other apart without regard for human dignity, and making it possible for genocide to reoccur when we say things like, there's a black man at the door, instead of, there's a man at the door. Or, I bought the car at a great price, boy did I Jew him down. And again, I ask, what do we do about it? What can we do about it? The answer is that we must do what we can, each in our own way, in short stories, in essays, in poetry and novels. And oh so clearly in games. And so my thanks go out to you, Richard Danksy, and everybody who worked on this book, as well as people like Brenda Romero with her excellent experiment in mechanics as metaphor, Train, or Luke Bernard, whose game Imagination is the Only Escape was never released because of its subject matter, and whose attempts to take on this topic really did almost end his career, and all the other designers out there pushing these boundaries in ways that demand respect. These are stories that must be told. See you next week.